Let's see, Tom Wells for Congress2016.com. And we have a list of issues here. It starts with clean air and water, health care, raising the living wage, straight arrow caucus. So if you don't mind, I guess that would be the most important substantive thing to ask is um, if you could give a uh, run through of your issues, sir. We'd love to hear about that. Well, let me start with Straight Era Caucus. As I've come to the conclusion, it is the most fundamental issue for the country presently. Um, presently, a lot of laws are written by corporations for corporations and are delivered to Congress along with a small bundle of money and are voted on before congressmen have even a chance to read them. And the complexity and intertangledness of the legal structure that we have now after maybe 30 or 35 years of this is overwhelming. We have constricted and tied ourselves to different lead weights which are pulling us to the bottom. So the simplest example of that get away from the figurative speech is Medicare Part D, where in 2003, the pharmaceutical industry spent $100 million lobbying Congress. And in return, Congress agreed in the wording of Medicare Part D that the Medicare agency would not, on our behalf, negotiate prices with the pharmaceutical companies. Now, the VA negotiates prices, and they get a 40% lower price on average than the Medicare people do. And that amounts to uh, roughly $100 billion per year that we just tie up and send the package to the pharmaceutical companies. They were already making quite substantial profits, and we added over the last 13 years over a trillion dollars to their take home. That take home comes directly from the taxpayers. And that is only a very clean but small example of a cost of congressional corruption. So the Straight Era Caucus will be my challenge to the other representatives to reject all corporate and large donations including donations from the national parties, which have a propensity to bundle money from large donors and deliver it to candidates with strings attached. So as long as that's true and the, your representatives yeah. are dependent upon funding through corporations and major donors, it's arguable that they are representing those people rather than ourselves. Tom, I just want to say that's an excellent example. I'm sure that's just one out of thousands, if not millions, of examples. I'm sure, and I did not know they paid up to $100 million to lobby Congress for that. I did hear about that. We pay, you know, probably costs in the U.S. than most other first world countries. Well, and that um, limitation on, on, on um, negotiating prices, well, the government. I contracted in my 15 years at Georgia Tech doing R&D for the Air Force and the Army. They negotiate price on everything except for drugs under Medicare. It's an example not only of the corruption, but of the arrogance with which that corruption is undertaken. It sounds like a valiant reform effort. Um, it's called um, the Straight Caucus, or let, let me see here, Straight Arrow the Caucus. Straight Arrow Caucus. And I've heard a yes, lot of I different reforms. Yes, I would challenge the representatives to adhere to the, uh, such constraints on their funding, and I will be proposing a uh, generous public financing option where people will be deciding which candidates get the public funds and people taking those funds will be precluded from accepting large donor corporate funding of any type. That sounds, I would say, I mean, appealing. Um, and uh, so, okay, so let's get to some of the other issues as well. I think, um, you know, just hearing you explain that, I think you said that very eloquently and started to honestly get my um, – blood boiling there, I just, you, you know, but I think that's a good thing. Oh, well, we're just getting started. Yeah. Uh, the single-payer health care, which Canada passed about 50 years ago, 
should we pass that finally, then we will damage the for-profit health insurance industry. But they have known that's coming for 50 years. They have seen that 50 other countries adopt single-payer health care and throw away the health insurance company and keep that profits to distribute among the people. So the reality is that you have to pay a little bit higher taxes, but you save a lot either by your employer not having to pay for your insurance or by you not having to pay for insurance personally. And having the benefits of that program not tied to your work, not tied to your small business, it's an immense win-win-win situation. And there is a trillion dollars available to be kept by the public that they're presently spending in excess on um, health care. The proof of that is that our health care costs per capita are about $7,500 a year, and the highest other country is right around 4000 That 3500 translates into a trillion dollars. I am a Ph.D. in physics. I can do the numbers. Yeah, I think the next highest country is actually uh, Switzerland, and they're still like a, a lot further down than us. And I would say they probably have pretty good health care. Uh, and you did mention win, win, win. I, I mean, so you think businesses would like that as well as the general public and and doctors? Oh, physicians too? really might. They, they may be physicians who go into into medicine to make money, but I think most of them really care about people's health. That's yeah. hopefully the case. And I think if better I health care outcomes. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt. I was just saying, I think a small business owner, a mid-sized business, or even a large business would probably not mind or can see some benefit in that as well. Oh, well, let me, let me mention the overall benefit is that we have all the countries that use such a system, besides paying less money, also have significantly longer, better longevity and lower infant mortality and um, maternal mortality. They have overall far better health care results. We're, in terms of statistical health care results, we're on par with Brazil, where the whole average income is not the $7,500 that we spend just on the health care segment. So we know it can be done 10 times cheaper and get just as good a result as we're getting now. No excuse for continuing to give money to the health care insurance companies. Now, if people who, still wanted to buy private insurance, they would be allowed to, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. As yeah. Okay. You, you would not need supplemental insurance. I mean, I was in Italy 25 years ago, seems, seems like yesterday, and I had to go to the emergency room and they treated me, and I said, how am I going to pay for this? Because I was a poor boy at that time, and they said, young man, this is a hospital. We don't take money. And wow. anyone who was in Italy who was sick, they went to the hospital. And that turns out to be cheaper than figuring out how much to build the insurance company. Very good. And one last thing on this is one thing that's funny that I saw is, you know how many pages – the Canadian health care bill is compared to the U.S. <laughs> Affordable Care Act. I think the Canadian health care bill was like 13 pages long. Oh, that's wonderful to know. No, I did not know that. Yeah, compared to like that. the 20,000, you know, so on pages that the Affordable well, Care Act was. Well, if you was. want to hide things, you need to write long and complicated laws. Yeah. What about... Um, small and mid-sized businesses. Do you think there's anything that we could do to help small and mid-sized businesses in this current well, day and age? let's look at what the uh, principal cause of small business failure is, and that actually, surprisingly, is the health of the proprietor. And the way that works is that the small business gets a small business health insurance program, and the for-profit industry insurance industry wants to make a profit off each group. So if the proprietor of the business or his wife or his children has some chronic disease which is expensive to treat but not debilitating, he finds that his premiums go up the second year 
by exactly the amount to cover the cost of treating his disease or his family's disease. So you don't actually have insurance except the first year. And the, yeah, that's the significant cost of business, business failure, but the undocumented part of that is that if you have an employee with a similar situation, you have to fire him because you can't afford the extra $100,000 a year an insurance premium that his ill health is costing you. This does not happen in a single payer health care system where we, the people, have decided that we are each individually worth taking care of, and it doesn't matter if you have a job or not. Now, I do want to ask you this um, just anything if you want to cover on any local issues pertaining to your specific district, and also you're running as a non party affiliation, so. If you have a pitch out there, per se, to say to Republicans, Democrats, the majority of the people who are, you know, independents, um, you know, just a broad general uh, election, what would you say to Republicans and Democrats and people who are not uh, affiliated with any party um, to your district? Well, let me let me mention that I have been uh, pretty much a lifelong Democrat. I, I made a mistake back in 72 and voted for Richard Nixon because I couldn't imagine anybody would be so stupid as what the Democrats were claiming as to jeopardize his election by breaking into a Democratic Party headquarters. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Nixon was impeached, and people have done far worse than that without being impeached since. But yeah. despite being a, a lifelong Democrat, I am running as an independent because Florida is the most expensive state to uh, run as a congressman anyway, and the D beside your name costs an extra $3,500. The independent costs 7000 which is enough, but that's what's needed to get on the ballot when the previous Democrat drops out with only a, a week before the qualifying deadline. So there I am, and to... To address the other parts of your question, if I can keep them in mind closely enough, uh, I think that the people who are supporting Donald Trump generally recognize that there's something wrong going on in the country, and I think that thing is government corruption is entangled and constraining manifestations and uh, all the gifting that we give to corporations. So I think they're misidentifying the problem, but that they understand that there is a problem which I am trying to address. And I believe that message communicates pretty clearly that if we get people to stop taking corporate money and start working for the people, we will all be better off. Yeah, and I think – go ahead. I was was just going to say I think talking about congressional politics – is not quite as divisive as presidential politics. So maybe someone out there is voting for Trump as a lesser of two evils. Doesn't mean that they cannot support you. They certainly could. Um, so we're talking about Congress well, I've been here. to Trump and, rallies, and a lot of the people yeah. there supported me. Absolutely. And, um, and it would be nice to see some unity, actually, in this. And you know what kind of message it would send to Congress to have a no-party-affiliated person uh, be sent to Congress, that would um, t- tell a message to the status quo. And I, you know, so that could be a, um, ha- you know, you would be representing the largest voting block out there, which is people who are independents, whether they lean one way or another, per se. Let me ask you this. Well, in my uh, congressional district, only about 20% of the people are, are without party affiliation, so, which is unusual nationwide. That is closer to 40% nationwide, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually uh, the biggest block. I think it's 42% and then 26% is Democrat, or 28% is Democrat, 26% is Republican. And, of course, there's less than 1% who's the special interest. 